Well, welcome everyone to today's webinar on Research Vocabularies Australia. First off, I'll give you a rundown on what we'll be covering today. Initially, we'll talk about what is a vocabulary and give some examples of vocabulary use in everyday life and research. We'll talk about why ANS has developed its new vocabulary service. And then we'll give a demonstration of the service and make sure that there's plenty of time for questions and discussion. So first up, what is a vocabulary? Well, the Getty defines a controlled vocabulary as an organised arrangement of words and phrases used to index content or to retrieve content through browsing or searching. A controlled vocabulary may be a simple list of terms or a more complex organisation of terms with definitions, translations or the expression of broader, narrower and matching relationships. An ontology involves another, another level of complexity involving the expression of a far greater range and number of specific relationships. And for the purposes of today's webinar and in describing the ANS service, we're talking about vocabularies rather than ontologies. Medical doctors use software that incorporates vocabulary terms and definitions. They need to be able to make very precise observations about symptoms presented by a patient in order to select appropriate medicines. When using such software, the GP will not typically type in these observations, but will select terms through autocomplete or point and click. The choices are controlled based on a controlled vocabulary, and Australia is attempting to gain agreement on sets of terms which would enable the implementation of shared electronic patient records. Authorities deal in vocabularies. In the United States of America, the Federal Highway Administration has an extensive authoritative classification of vehicles. This includes text descriptions and images aimed at clearly conveying what is meant by terms describing a wide range of vehicles. Vocabularies are a natural output of such authorities. In the case of the Highway Authority, the classification is typically used to support charging on toll roads, but such classifications may also have applications to research. Vocabularies are used in information systems. Consumer sites such as Amazon are structured using controlled terms. An item such as a travel wallet is categorised within a hierarchical tree that starts at clothing, shoes and jewellery, then progresses to luggage and travel gear, then down to travel accessories, and finally the item itself, travel wallets. Such categorisations are enabled by controlled vocabularies and are often a complement to a text-based search or indeed combined with search in a faceted or filtered search. Controlled or standardised vocabularies are an important part of research and scholarly communication since these rely on precise concepts with shared and structured terminology. The ability to replicate and test and experiment or communicate and verify a conclusion requires clear description and communication of concepts about which there is a shared understanding of meaning. As an example, paleontologists use an agreed vocabulary covering time periods. This enables them to refer to periods of time in the knowledge that they agree, for example, on how a particular era relates to a particular era. Data captured by the Integrated Marine Observing System are documented using an agreed community metadata schema. These descriptions involve the use of controlled vocabularies which underpin the indexing of data during data set registration in data delivery systems, as well as provide the content for search facets available within the IMOS data discovery portal. The use of controlled vocabularies also allows IMOS to integrate internationally with other initiatives such as ODIP, or the Ocean Data Interoperability Platform. Vocabularies are also important in enabling data reuse. As a simple example, a tabular data set in a spreadsheet would typically contain column headings describing the content of each table. A third party wishing to use this data would need to know what those headings mean in order to make sense of the data. To support data reuse, the data creator may supply a data dictionary to accompany the data set. Controlled terminology is also vital if seeking to relate data sets to each other. Whether this is a relatively simple join across two data sets or a meta-analysis involving the bringing together of multiple data sets which may have been created at different time periods or across different geographic regions. Wherever data sets are linked or merged, the connections are made at points that are known to be common. Things can go wrong when there isn't a shared understanding of terminology. In September 1999, a NASA spacecraft was lost due to mismatch between metric and imperial units used by the navigation and production teams respectively. 
As part of a $300 million mission, the orbiter had completed a nearly 10-month journey to Mars and was lost by being put into the wrong orbit. One agency supplied metric measurements and the other supplied imperial. So that was a bit of a rundown on vocabularies, what they are and how they're used, and particularly how they're used in research and their importance to research. I'll now pass over to Adrian, who will talk about the ANS development of the vocabulary service and why ANS was uh, involved in this activity. Thanks, Sean. Uh, so we've heard there how standardised vocabularies are applicable to making better research, better connections and discovery for research data, and better reuse of research data. We've had some nice examples of all of those uh, applications of standardised vocabularies. Now, discovery connections between data and the reuse of data are all things which are part of the core mission of the Australian National Data Service and, and a lot of our infrastructure and services are targeted to improve uh, the connections between data that make it more easily discoverable, make it reusable. In sum, in general, it's you know to add value to data and that is the core mission of the Australian National Data Service is to make research data more valuable. So I think we've seen in those examples that uh, research data that has been encoded with standardised terminology that's uh, agreed upon or at least commonly used uh, or at least defined by a community, that that kind of data is uh, undoubtedly more valuable than you know, data that hasn't been done. So what can and then do to make using these kind of standardised vocabularies easy, you know, to make doing the right thing, which is sometimes expensive or hard, to make uh, doing the right thing easy. And also, we, you know, when Anne's is thinking about what a service we can provide, we don't provide obviously things which are very specific for an institution or a discipline or a domain, but we're looking for things which cut across the domains that which are useful um, across every institution in Australia or across every domain in Australia. So we provide that cross-cutting uh, kind of services for discovery and connection and reuse. And so we've now uh, launching today a set of services that make it easier to for researchers to find and use standardised vocabularies that apply to their research, that are, uh, make it easier for research communities to publish and share uh, standardised vocabularies that they are applying to their own research, and uh, a set of services that make it easy to, in fact, create and manage machine-readable forms of these, you know, easily shareable forms of uh, these standardised vocabularies. So to that end, we've got uh, a system that has sort of three areas of functionality. One, which is around discovery and reuse, so making things easier. We've got, a, if you like, a portal that uh, makes it easier, and then a whole set of tools, widgets, that, think, uh, that make it easier to use uh, standardised vocabularies. Uh, we've got a publishing platform that allows you to publish the existence or, and a description of your standardised vocabulary, as well as actually share a finely crafted uh, version of that vocabulary, an official definitive source, if you like, that's also uh, machine readable. And then we have uh, a set of editing tools that allow you to craft and create, manage. An important part of managing a, a vocabulary is being able to work with collaborators, uh, being able to um, talk over the definitions and uh, terminology that, that is used, come to a consensus and then publish it out. So we have uh, developed tools in all of those uh, different areas and uh, Jane will be walking us through those uh, in a little moment. Just before we get that, a little note on um, how we've been able to get input 
into the service. As we've been developing this service over the last year, it's been part of a, a collaborative project with a, a couple of the research facilities and research organisations uh, here in Australia, really based on their requirements and, and needs. And uh, there's been a formal project since uh, last October, and uh, we're just now sort of, we've had a release of the software that underlies the service, uh, and now we're really launching the service you know, as, a, as a full package. It's not just IT. We, are, um, we realize that this is uh, a lot to do with you know, just uh, promoting the awareness, creating the different communities that, that uh, are, have the shared interests and the shared um, definitions that create a controlled vocabulary, making you know, training support materials, um, there's a whole set of other things around uh, the, the core uh, IT functions. And uh, so we've been creating the service over the last year. We're very, very open to uh, further input from uh, any of the users, particularly here in Australia, but you know, internationally about making uh, research vocabularies that are of global research interest you know, available to our researchers uh, here in Australia. So if you are... Um, have any interest whatsoever we're very very keen to hear how you might be able to use the service or if you have suggestions about the areas in which we could expand so we might now go to have a look at a closer look at the service we'll be changing over to jane down in melbourne jane would you like to take over the screen there and then move us on yes absolutely so as adrian said research vocabularies australia is basically made up of three different tools, a Research Vocabularies Australia portal, um, which is for the discovery and description and access of vocabularies, a repository where those vocabularies and metadata about them is stored, and an editor in which our partners can create and, and manage their own vocabularies. Um, and these Different portions can be used by lots of different users, either creators and providers of vocabularies, who may be on pages, librarians, data managers, really anyone who's looking with the creation or management or sharing of vocabulary, and uh, consumers of vocabularies, you know, research groups or researchers, librarians, data managers, etc. So now we're going to do a little bit of a demo of the vocabulary service. And so this is the URL for the uh, Research Vocabularies Australia portal. So this is sort of the landing page of RVA. And as you can see, we have a big long list of vocabularies that are currently available through our system. So for a lot of these these vocabularies, there is metadata about them and also either links out to a provider's website or um, actual data that is um, served within this system. So let's try doing a search. All right, so I've just searched for the query was water. And so I'm uh, being re recommended a couple of different results. And some of these results are uh, vocabularies that are relevant. So obviously, water resources thesaurus is a relevant vocabulary to my search. And then I'm also getting some vocabularies in which the concepts in them are relevant. So here we can see that the AODN parameter category vocabulary has two concepts that are relevant, uh, physical water and water pressure. We can also do some faceting here. We allow for the faceting of uh, subjects that are uh, describing the vocabularies as a whole, uh, the publishers of the vocabulary, languages which uh, are used in the vocabulary, formats in which the vocabulary is available, ways in which the vocabulary is accessible, and how the vo vocabulary might be licensed. All right, so let's take a look at this first result here. So we've got the vocabulary and some metadata about it. You can see that it's published by the USGS and it has some other related organizations uh, so we can see a little bit of information about those. It was created in 1971, getting some, some metadata about it and the current version is the 1980 version and this actually links out to the USGS 
website in which the vocabulary is available in PDF form. So this format is really great for people to use and so you as a researcher might want to describe your research using this thesaurus and you can also share it with your colleagues and have them describe their, their research using this thesaurus. Um, but it's not really available in a machine readable format um, and there are some advantages that the that RVA takes advantage of that a machine readable format um, might offer. And we will actually take a look at one of those right now. So we're going to go to the third result, which is the AODN parameter category vocabulary. All right, so it looks pretty similar so far to the other vocabulary, but we actually have a few other, other tools available to us. All right, so you can see that this vocabulary um, was published by EMII. Um, it has an author, and you can actually see other vocabulary that that author may have worked on as well. We can browse through the current version of this vocabulary, so we can actually drill down into those concepts. We can also search, um, so it's recommended us physical water as a concept in that vocabulary. For that current version of the vocabulary, we have a couple of different choices. We can um, query the vocabulary data via Sparkle, uh, the Sparkle query language. We can download the vocabulary in a variety of formats of our own choice. Or we can access the vocabulary via the RVA Linked Data API. So the Linked Data API allows us to work with the actual concepts of the vocabulary and so you can actually see a lot of information about the individual concepts including their unique ID um, and lots and lots of other very useful stuff. This actually it's also possible to query the linked data API. So I've been provided with just those four top concepts this vocabulary in the linked data API. Uh, it's also possible to view the vocabulary in various different formats. So here we're viewing the exact same thing just in JSON format. All right, so I'm going to go back, back to the RVA portal and show you how this vocabulary can be used via the Research Vocabularies Australia widget. So the widget is actually a really fantastic tool that you can use in your own system to describe or discover vocabularies. So you can actually use it for the description or discovery of your own resources in your system. So this is an example of how this vocabulary um, can be searched. Um, so I've just searched for water and I've selected the water pressure concept. So you could see how that can be used to apply water pressure as a subject to a resource. Um, and it actually also shows a little snippet of the code that allows you to implement that vocabulary. We have more information about this widget at our ANS developers website. There's actually three different modes. We were just looking at the, the searching mode, which uh, here is available with the ANZ SRC FOR vocabulary. There's also a uh, narrowing mode, which is currently being sourced from the RIFCS Vocabularies for Registry Schema identifier. So all of the concepts in that vocabulary are available for choice here. And there's also a tree mode that allows you to drill down into the concepts and select one of your choice. All right, so we've talked about the ways that the portal can be used and the widget can be used and the linked data API can be used. But we haven't yet talked about how these vocabularies actually get into the system. So the ways to access that are through my vocabularies. And I've actually already signed in via my personal AAF account. So this my vocabs can be used by vocabulary managers, publishers, etc. Anyone who wants to publish a vocabulary for the use of other research researchers and other organizations. It allows you to describe your vocabularies uh, very richly by adding metadata about them. It also allows you to upload or link to multiple versions of the vocabulary. 
So we can see here there's lots and lots of different ways that we can describe vocabularies. If you already have a system for managing your vocabularies, you can describe and link to or upload your vocabulary um, using Add a New Vocabulary. Um, but if you don't have that, um, if you don't have a sort of useful way of managing your vocabularies, then you can do so privately in our uh, RVA editor. Uh, we have chosen to use the pool party system for that, and you can actually automatically integrate those vocabularies that you've either created or managed in Pool Party into this system, which I'll show you in a little bit. But I'll actually take you to Pool Party first. So this is the system that we allow our partners to actually manage and create their own vocabularies in. And this is not available for public viewing, um, but it is sort of like an editing tool. And we can see here that I've created just a little silly vegetable vocabulary here. Um, with some concepts. And I've created a little bit of metadata about those concepts. All right, so because our two systems are integrated, what we can do here is take the, the unique ID of that, of that project and uh, our RVA portal will automatically recognize it. And we can, or basically the, the, a lot of the metadata that has been provided in Pool Party will automatically be recognized by the portal, and we'll just have to add just a little bit more information before we can publish it. So we'll say that this vocabulary was created in 2015, and we will add the current version of the data of the vocabulary. I'll call it VegBook1, and it is being released today. I told the system that I want this to be available via Sparkle API for querying, and also via uh, the linked data API through a web page. It's owned by my organization, and now I can publish this vocabulary. All right, so now we can see that this is available for anyone on the web to browse. We can drill through those vocabulary concepts within RVA portal. We can also see how that, how the widget could be possibly implemented in another system and see that code, exactly. Um, we could query this vocabulary via Sparkle query. We could download it in a lot of different formats, and we can also see it in the Linked Data API. So this allows for that really, really easy integration between uh, the vocabulary editor, which is Pool Party, and the vocabulary portal, which we're looking at right now. All right, so that uh, ends the demo of RVA. So um, I'm actually going to go ahead and hand back the presenter to Susanna. Thank you, Jane. Now there's a whole bunch of questions that have come through. Now this one says, how can we cite a vocabulary or a particular version of the vocabulary? A very good question. Uh, as part of this service, there's no particular cite this vocabulary um, in this particular way, but we, you know, that's a, a good question. We'll take that on board as a potential future sort of functionality so that people can refer to the vocabulary itself. I mean, the portal will obviously will have a, a URL, um, so there's no reason why you couldn't use the URL of, of that descriptive page um, to reference the um, vocabulary. But I assume that, uh, Peter, you're asking about some more formal uh, way of acknowledging and tracking its use, etc. cetera. Um, it's a good question in that it certainly acknowledges that these classifications and concept schemes and terminologies, etc., are really a, quite an important output of, of uh, scholarly activity. And certainly... Uh, and that you're know, empowering global research, you know, and it can take, you know, sometimes, you know, five or ten years for a community to come together and do all the, the diplomacy and politics and technology and science that's required to, you know, get to a, a shared set of concepts that, you know, really can empower, you know, a global community of research for, you know, then and, you know, decades afterwards. Um, so that 
output itself is a is a is an important output of research. Uh, we've had people ask us whether you know if people are familiar with our other service, Research Data Australia, which is really a publishing of research outputs kind of um, non-traditional outputs, if you like. We've had people ask if over in that system you could um, have a description of a work out there and kind of register it for people to say, yep, this is an output of our research project. And obviously over in that system we have set things up to, you know, for you to be able to cite a data set or to cite a piece of software or something like that. So. Uh, I know that's something we've been looking at through the Research Data Australia portal as to how you might cite these kind of things as, you know, um, first class objects of research. But again, how would we make the linkage, you know, if a data set says that, yes, we use this uh, set of terms, you know, how would that be communicated? So, yeah, it's a good question, Peter. We're um, happy to have other people discuss, but uh, for the moment, we'll take that as a uh, as a suggestion for future um, functionality, not just sort of technical functionality, but really the question, how do you um, share, acknowledge, and refer to these kind of uh, very important scholarly uh, resources and scholarly outputs? Certainly, if any of the uh, participants today are aware of work in this area, we'd be very interested to hear about it. I mean, I'd imagine at the very least, one would want to record the name of the vocabulary very importantly, the version, as the versions change and then the relationships in the vocabulary can change. Uh, the publisher and I'd say uh, a URI to whatever is the primary publication point. I mean, who is the organisation or individual that is creating and maintaining that vocabulary and where can that, I suppose, canonical version of that uh, vocabulary be discovered? But yeah, it'd be good to uh, find mm. out more about that. Is the vocabulary being used to describe the vocabularies, which does sound rather <laughs> recursive, but uh, yes, that's the kind of thing we have thought about. Jane, you there? Yeah, no, that's, that's an excellent question. Um, currently, we are using both the ANZ SRC FOR, the fields of research vocabulary, um, that is. Uh, published via the Australian um, Bureau of Statistics, and we also allow people to create their own local concepts, so basically just subject tags. However, in the future, we hope to um, be able to uh, describe the vocabularies using other vocabularies. And yes, it is definitely a very um, a meta concept. Can a concept, for example, bean, uh, be shared between more than one vocabularies, for example, both in the vegetable vocabulary but also in a recipe vocabulary. Again, a really nice question there. Um, so, yes, uh, the same concept uh, is quite often uh, present in two different vocabularies. It might be published, um, you know, a subset that we use, which is, you know, there might be an international vocabulary that has you know, 2,000 concepts and someone in Australia will say, well, we're, you know, we're using this little subset and uh, if you're using our data archive, then we need you to, um, you know, describe your data using these 50 of that very large uh, potential global set. So we have already got examples like that. So you get a second, you know, a smaller vocabulary. There are ways in the in the background, in the, the way in which these vocabularies are encoded for you know, machine use, um, there's a standard called SCOS, and SCOS uh, does allow you to say uh, the concept in this particular standardized vocabulary list is exactly the same as our concept in another one, or is you know pretty much the same uh, as as another one or you know a number of different kinds of, of matches so uh, and that's a very important kind of um, tool in this knowledge management that allows you to say um, you know these two things are pretty much the same or exactly we're actually reusing that one exactly the same in this other vocabulary so yes that's very much you know, part of it 
Anything else, Rowan? Yes, it's, it's one of the wonders of uh, linked data in mm -hmm. that um, each of these concepts in the vocabularies that are being published through the AND service have a uh, unique identifier and that identifier can be referenced and uh, pointed towards using other vocabularies. Here's a nice question. Would you permit library studies or information management students to use this service to learn about constructing a vocabulary? A good question to put me on the spot for the scope of our service. Well, uh, let me start with saying that the normal scope for this service is research. So we're asking research groups if they are using a particular you know, local Australian vocabulary for marsupials or gum trees or something like that to publish it. Uh, we're also asking if there are global standards for describing oceans, etc. that, you know, you use this service to publish and promote the reuse of that. Uh, in research, that's our standard kind of scope. Uh, where the scope grow, grows out, um, we've had, for example, some uh, Commonwealth science agencies or Commonwealth uh, government agencies that define things for Australia and those uh, vocabularies are used by, obviously, you know, used by research. The example we've had here is the ABS, the Australian Bureau of Statistics, who have done a classification of research, and we're using that particular classification here. Um, so the scope does uh, move out to, you know, Commonwealth agencies that define concepts to be used in research. Um, we are funded by the Department of Education, so you know the using this for students um, is obviously not uh, out of scope. The, the kind of license that we have is you know is based on educational uh, institutions. So uh, as a um, uh, as a, in principle, you know students learning how to you know create vocabularies. Um, yeah, it would, would definitely be in scope. We'd have to obviously see how much of a load that puts on our, on our system from a pragmatic point of view, but um, certainly the students today are the researchers of tomorrow, and quite a lot of research is done by um, students anyway, so uh, skilling up the, the knowledge managers of the future is certainly something that is in our interest, and you know, we'd be very keen to make sure that this infrastructure can help to make sure that in five or ten years we've got lots of people who can you know, continue using this infrastructure. How can we access Pool Party? Didn't seem to have an AAF login at the URL I copied from on screen. So maybe we'll go back to Jane to sort of walk through or at least describe how, how access happens there. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you should be able to see a link right now uh, to the RVA documentation home, which um, we have made available for uh, anyone to use. Um, so this not only would allow you to learn how to describe a vocabulary and publish a vocabulary via the RVA portal, it also will allow you to use Pool Party um, and to get registered for Pool Party. So to uh, to get up set up, to get set up with an account for Pool Party, you can contact us at services at ands.org.au. And there's also a few helpful documents on the RVA documentation that um, walk you through the process of getting started with that system. So um, yeah, get in touch with us and do a little bit of discovery in the RVA documentation. Yes, and on that, just so that it's clear on the access, uh, look, as far as the discovery portal, it's an open internet service, so everyone, we're encouraging everyone in the world to come and browse through the vocabs there. If you want to publish you know, a description of a vocabulary, it's a very open system. You can log in with a number of um, login systems. That's a very open system. We're encouraging anyone to come in and share information about their vocabularies. If you want to use the editor, then that's a slightly more restricted service. You know, it's not restricted in that sense, but you do need to contact us to get, a, to get a, an account to start to use that. So uh, have a look at the documentation that's uh, linked on the screen at the moment and contact services at ANS if you want to get started uh, using the editor. Okay, our next question is, the library world might treat an online vocabulary as a data set, a continuing resource, or an electronic resource? 
Assuming that this is a comment around us, that the discussion we had a little bit earlier about, you know, is the are these citation. citation. Uh, a resource for citation. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm assuming this is a um, yes, a question about, you know, how would you refer to these things? So I think uh, that questionnaire is saying that the the library world would treat these um, as a data set or as a uh, some kind of an electronic resource. I suppose that's a plus one vote for um, finding a way of being able to acknowledge and track the, the usage of these things. Do you have any plans to make it possible to search across vocabularies for a specific concept? And uh, it is actually currently possible to search in the RVA portal for a concept and um, be recommended to various vocabularies. And um, if you remember, in the demo from before, we saw some concepts that were recommended from those various vocabularies in the search results. If I make a vocabulary, how do I ensure that the URIs will be valid? Is the intention that vocab.ands.org.au serves these? That's a good question. I might just get started and then I'll get some comment from everyone else. Yes, we can provide um, you know, uh, the uh, URIs, probably better um, practice is to provide a, a permanent URL with some kind of identifier. So you could provide them back on your own site if you have some long-lived uh, URLs that you think you're, if you are the, the National Library of Australia or something like that and you think you have a, some uh, long-lived site, then you're welcome to use your, your own URLs in a, in a vocabulary that's published through our site. ANS also has a, f a few um, persistent URL, persistent identifier services that you could use. So we have a DOI service, we have a handle service, we have a uh, access to a Perl server as well. So as you're getting in touch with us about publishing your vocabulary, we could talk to you about um, using some of those services to uh, create your URLs so that they would be um, more persistent into the future. So I think there's a you know, there's a set of uh, options there, and I think you know, the, the vocabularies, if you go through the stuff that we already have on the site now, uh, we've probably got examples of, of all of those different scenarios. All right, uh, we've got another question here. A comment, I think. A comment. There is a sophisticated handling of vocabularies as entities that can be cited, and it like seems emerging. that is emerging. Good, so that's a nice comment, and we'll follow that up with that question uh, um, afterwards. All right, another question. I'm looking at uh, vocabs.ans.org slash particular one platform category. And I see that there is a concept of vessel, no definition of what a vessel is. Does the system allow you to put in the definition? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, SCOS, the, the kind of scheme that, we, that is generally used for describing um, Vocabularies has a property that is uh, definition. Of course, they're not all not all the properties are, uh, are compulsory, and uh, these resources uh, tend to be a kind of a, a continuum between you know a simple list, uh, a list with some identifiers, a list a list with some descriptions. Then you're starting to move on to what would normally be called a let's say a thesaurus or something like that. So, uh, but certainly, your the factual question is yes, it is possible to uh, provide definitions. Is that anything else to add there? Yeah, well, I suppose that in the case of the vocabulary that we're looking at, this was uh, provided by a third party by IMOS, and um, in some cases they would or would not provide definitions. So it's really up to you in that sense it's up to the uh, content creator to decide the extent of the guidance that may be provided. This probably gets us to the point about I suppose the scope of the AND service that fundamentally there's the provision of uh, uh, the technical infrastructure and the support for people to be able to use the tools but there, there come in limits on the degree to which um, ANDs may or may not intervene in the publication and editorial practices of the uh, content providers. And that discussion around that area is probably something that fans will uh, tease out a little more in time. Yeah, I have one more little thing to add there. Um, so 
that commenter said that they're looking at the vocabulary in the portal. Um, and just to sort of literally answer this question, yes, RVA does allow for you to put in a definition, but that would happen at the editing point. So right now, you're looking at the portal, and um, the, the, uh, the adding a definition would happen at the editing. Um, portion of the service. And the uh, yeah. access to the information about the definition you'd probably be doing at a different level, not at that sort of descriptive level that we have in the portal. So. Right, and the definition of that concept would be visible via the Linked Data API, which yeah. we did look at. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, either we doubt it'd be in the RDF that's downloaded or you could view it in the, that um, uh, interface that you showed. So, all right, we've got another question here. What happens to the pool party account if ANS funds end? Okay, that's a good question. Um, so overall for our service, it's a sustainable service because it's uh, a national infrastructure. Now, of course, national infrastructure for Australia to, were to be, um, you know, become a banana republic or something like that, then of course, you know, perhaps the roads wouldn't work and all sorts of things uh, wouldn't. Uh, the Commonwealth Government has a national collaborative research infrastructure strategy, which has been going on since the early 2000s, um, and which is, you know, is refreshed every few years. There's a, currently a, a serious uh, review that's happening with Prime Minister and the Cabinet, uh, the Clark Review, which is about, you know, plans for the next 10 years of uh, research infrastructure. So. Uh, it's part of that big research infrastructure strategy, um, so you can count on it. If you know, if it's a valuable service, then um, it can be uh, considered to be a, a, a sustainable part of that national research infrastructure. Um, if the particular your question is, uh, you know, what happens if pool party, you know, you no longer have access to uh, pool party to create and manage things? We've constructed the service in a particular way that. Uh, the creation and management does act, does use the commercial pool party tool, which is a really nice, intuitive and easy to use interface. However, once you've finished creating it, um, all the publication and management happens in the uh, kind of open source uh, and controlled uh, infrastructure, uh, which would continue, you know, whether we paid pool party a, a license or not. So the license really is to allow you to create things and, and manage the uh, new versions and things like that, or to use uh, the pool party to have discussions with your community around you know, concepts, et cetera. But once you've done that and you've got a, a list, then we don't use the pool party for access, for publication, for discovery. All the long-lived activities uh, happen in um, fully and controlled and open source uh, infrastructure. Surely to be of value, definition should be mandatory. If you do not uh, know what it means, then what is the use of simply knowing a concept in terms of being able to mash up the data? I go back to uh, Rowan's comment there. Um, yes, uh, if for your particular community, it is uh, absolutely necessary to have the uh, definition, uh, then we would encourage you to to do so. I mean, ANS is providing a, uh, an enabling infrastructure. Well, I don't think we'll have a heavy hand around uh, quality, etc. cetera. Um, if that's what's required for your community, then um, we'll help you to, to provide that, uh, to provide what's required. Uh, yes, look, a definition is, and uh, just to be clear about that one, you may not see the definition uh, up at the portal, it's quite possible that there are definitions for all of those, or that they are, you know, as we said before, related to another concept which is uh, defined somewhere else. Yes, it's an interesting question, isn't it? I mean, this vocabulary has been, has been created, has been demonstrated to be able to be used and meet the needs of the uh, content provider. Now, what happens when um, that vocabulary becomes more broadly available and people may be interested in using it? As Adrian says, there isn't, you know, there are questions about what Anne's role is in that area, but perhaps it comes down to uh, development of a uh, community around vocabulary users. So new users can talk with content creators about their vocabularies and suggest 
uh, changes, modifications. Because one of the primary things in the end service is the uh, enablement of a distributed and I suppose community workflow for creating and uh, managing vocabularies. So it's certainly discussion about content and content modification is part of that. Um, there are also some vocabularies that are purposefully developed uh, with no uh, definitions for the concepts and um, sometimes these vocabularies are created in that way um, because the people who are developing them believe that uh, you should be able to understand what the concepts are or sort of the definition of, of the concept based on where it sits um, in relationship to other concepts. Um, so that's just one, one perspective there. That's all I had to add. Good. Next question is, can we suggest the vocabs to be included, meaning vocabs developed by others, not our own? So that's a very good question. Um, I don't know whether we uh, – anyway, back on the interface of Research Vocabularies Australia, there is a, a feedback interface, yes. So the answer to your question is, yes, we are very, very keen to be led by the community as to what content should be covered in the in the discovery portal. Uh, so uh, we are – extremely keen to hear from you uh, about that. There are uh, ways of providing that feedback through the portal or just to the services of Dan's email that's there. Or if you want us you know, to be involved in you know, talking to you about you know, what the requirements are, we'd be um, keen to be involved there. Now, of course, Anne's not uh, um, and doesn't pretend to be um, subject matter experts in all these different uh, domains, but you know, we're happy to facilitate those conversations. Like the ability to find API endpoints in each individual vocabulary uh, entry, is there an API to query list of published controlled vocabulary entries? That's an interesting question. Can you query all the different, an API query of all the different vocabularies? Yes, you can, but we'd have to provide, at the moment that's a, it's not something that we surface up there in the uh, general um, sort of uh, graphical user interface, um, but it's a, seeing as though you're saying that's a, a useful thing, then we will find ways of uh, making that more visible uh, and we can provide that to you uh, offline as well. The last question, if we have an existing controlled vocabulary already published elsewhere and described in RDF, Turtle, are we able to make it accessible through RVA if so, how would this work? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Uh, that's part uh, in the Research Vocabularies Australia. We assume that we will have descriptions of, let's say, hundreds of uh, research vocabularies, hopefully thousands, let's hope not millions, um, and there'll be descriptions of lots. Uh, some of those will have um, you know, uploaded files that can also be used. Um, they may be, you know, the official, there may be several sort of access points. We're very happy for this service to provide an ongoing access point, and particularly as it's part of research infrastructure. That's really one of the services we're, we're hoping to provide. So there, um, uh, yes, absolutely. Can we register or find out what collections are using a vocabulary? That's a good question. I'm not sure that we have a way of doing that immediately, uh, and that's a very good question. Um, actually, yeah. I, I, I can go ahead and answer that. Um, we do actually have a way of describing a service or another um, tool that may be using a vocabulary. So if you're on the, the RVA portal page for a vocabulary and um, someone has entered information about a system that may be using that vocabulary. So for example, uh, MESH, the um, medical subject headings vocabulary, um, is used in, um, in a lot of different systems. Um, so it's possible to uh, enter information about those systems that are using that vocabulary. Um, and if you want to provide information about that, you can always give us feedback um, uh, through the portal. Good. And your, your, the point, Amanda, about you know what data collections use a particular vocabulary is a very good one. At the moment, we don't have that sort of 
value add between, let's say, Research Data Australia and Research Vocabularies Australia, but point taken, we will look into how to, you know, it's kind of on our back burner. And we have a nice comment there that we should use uh, Yazgui uh, for the Sparkle Endpoints. Thanks for that. Um, we'll take that on board as well. Fantastic. Thank you all very much for attending, and we will see you all at our next webinar.